Hi, I'm Mary Kopsinski, the CEO of Regalytics. Welcome to this week's regulatory roundup hosted in my messy kitchen full of dishes. The regulator of the week is Massachusetts. Not one, not two, but three privacy bills are open this week for hearings. House Bill 107, 136, and 142 cover privacy and technology and education, data privacy, and the Massachusetts Information Privacy Act. The topic of the week is fines. Yes, there were fines, there always are, but this week there were some regulators talking more strategically about fines. FINRA formally adopted new rules to address firms with a significant history of misconduct, which comes into effect on January of 2022. FINRA is also proposing a rule change on 2165, which covers the financial exploitation of specified adults, and there is a last round of comments open, so speak up. The Securities and Exchange Commission today announced that it has barred two individuals from the SEC Whistleblower Award Program for filing hundreds of frivolous award applications. This is thanks to amendments to the Whistleblower Program that were passed in 2020, after repeatedly telling these people to stop wasting the SEC's time. Another organization, NACHA, which is the National Automated Clearinghouse Association, is finally cracking down on some rules passed in 2020. To make the ACH system more effective, financial institutions have to register and keep their information up to date beginning July 1st of 2020, and they had four months to comply. However, NACHA gave a grace period for enforcement until August of 2021. Anyway, NACHA went through a random sampling of FDIC and NCUA registered financial institutions to see if they were one of the 39,000 institutions that have registered, and if not, they get fined. So this week, NACHA fined nine financial institutions in their random sampling that were caught for non-compliance. In terms of interesting fines, just traditional old fines, the CFTC settled with Interactive Brokers, a registered futures commission merchant, for failing to supervise the handling of its customer accounts and not adequately configuring its electronic trading system to calculate margin. They're paying a civil monetary penalty of $1.75 million and restitution of $82 million to its customers. Crypto is also interesting this week. Central banks of Hong Kong, China, UAE, and Thailand have been building a prototype of multiple central bank digital currencies to deliver real-time, cheaper, and safer cross-border payments and settlements. They issued a report that said the prototype was able to compete, complete international transfers and foreign exchange operations in seconds, as opposed to several days, and could operate on a 24-7 basis and cost half the price. The Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority, or FINMA, has issued two approvals to operate financial market infrastructures based on DLT. Specifically, they authorize six digital exchange to act as a central security depository and the associated company SDX Trading to act as a stock exchange. This is the first time that a license has been issued in the Swiss Financial Center for Infrastructures that facilitate the trading of digital currencies in the form of tokens and their integrated settlement. Here in the US, Kraken got fined $1.25 million by the CFTC for illegally offering margined retail commodity transactions and digital assets, including Bitcoin, and failing to register as a futures commission merchant. The NCUA is still looking for comments on digital assets and related technologies on federally insured credit unions. The board decided to extend the comment period for an additional 30 days. And at the state level, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas has appointed a working group on blockchain matters. The group will develop a master plan for the expansion of the blockchain industry in Texas. For those of you following LIBOR, the FCA reminded everyone the panels that manage LIBOR for sterling, Japanese yen, Swiss franc, and euro are ceasing on December 31st. If there are any legacy contracts that haven't been remediated, the LIBOR benchmark administrator is going to be publishing new settings under a synthetic methodology throughout 2022, and this is only going to work for a specific set of legacy contracts. So, Get a hustle in Wall Street, 
close up those negotiations. And for those of you following diversity and inclusion, AstraZeneca, the big pharma company, settled with the U.S. Department of Labor over race and gender-based pay discrimination affecting 318 female and Hispanic employees at its North American headquarters. A routine federal compliance investigation found out that from 2015 to 2016, the company failed to comply with Executive Order 11246, which prohibits race and gender discrimination by federal contractors. AstraZeneca agreed to pay $560,000 in back pay and interest to the 318 employees. And finally, Governor Gavin Newsom of California signed SB 65, designed to improve maternal and infant outcomes, particularly for families of color. The funny part is they're calling it the California Momnibus Act. That's it this week for Regalytics. I'll see you next Wednesday on LinkedIn and YouTube.